Hello crafty friends, this is Julia, long time no see. I'm super super excited to finally be back with a brand new card making video. And for this one I used stamps and dies from the latest Lawn Fawn release to create a 40th birthday card. I stamped the images from Terrific Day, Terrific Day add-on, as well as the little kitty from Perfectly Wicked, the skirt from Happy Halloween and the flower crown from Extra Amazing Easter onto Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper and I'm using my Copic markers to color in all of the images. I will leave all the colors I'm using on a little batter on screen so it's really easy to see which ones I'm using because I know some of the marker caps aren't as easy to read. I was actually really struggling to come up with an idea for a 40th birthday card but when I saw the cheap critters I thought it would be just so fun because you know when you're 40 it's not like the wild partying days for most of us. Uh, it's more like the distinguished gentlemen having a little get-together. <laughs> I thought it was just so funny and I love creating custom sentiments with alphabet dies or like word dies. And I know this one isn't quite as punny as I would like it because I genuinely couldn't come up with anything punny for a 40th birthday. Um, but I'm just so excited to soon get to use the like year 11, I think it was, with a planet. And I'm sorry I missed your birthday, I didn't plan it that way. Oh my god, that just cracks me up, it's so funny. And uh, yeah, I will just leave you with some music until I'm done with the coloring. I will also add the jump marks in the description below, so you can just jump ahead to the chapter you want to see if you're not into watching me color.
up next, I die cut two of the bunting banners from L'Enfant and I'm using my Copic markers to color them in. I'm using R24, R22 and R21 and R20 for the red shades. I want to have four like rainbowy colors to make them like nice and bright. And for yellow, I'm using Y17, Y15, Y13 and Y11. For my blues, I'm using B20 markers, so B26 as my darkest shade, B23 and B21. And for my fourth color, I'm using YG markers to give it a bit like a nice bright green. So I'm starting with YG03, YG01, again with a little more of the YG03, and finally YG00. And for the like line of the bunting, I'm just coloring it in with N3, just so that it's like a nice neutral. I also die cut the new treehouse, or relatively new by now, uh, the treehouse, and I'm using Lawn Fawn inks to ink blend it. I die cut it out of Bristol Smooth cardstock, and I first used pizza crust. That was just like a light base color, and I'm adding a little bit more definition with dough. And finally, bringing in a little bit deeper of a shade for the edges with walnut. Then for the treetops, I'm using celery stick, which is just a beautiful light green. I really love this color for like grass. They also have freshly cut grass, which is a lot of a, a lot more deeper green but this is like for a more pastel look it's beautiful then i'm also adding some splatters for a bit more interest and for this one i'm using jalap jalapeno is that how you pronounce it i'm not sure sorry if i'm butchering it and i just added some water and adding splatters and after that i spent like 10 minutes trying to get the color out of the corner of the white mat but you know, you live and learn next time. More in the middle of the mat, not in the corner. Then I die cut the scallop panel, which is from the Slimline Scallops with Hearts from L'Enfant. And I just masked off the scalloped edges so that they will stay nice and white. And I just used the stitching line as a guide and just used post-it tape to mask it. And I'm using the celery stick ink again for the grass. And for my sky, I'm using Kitty Pool. Just blending the colors back and forth. I am having a little bit more trouble than I do with my oxides because those are uh, dye inks and not um, like the hybrid inks that the oxides are. But the colors are so beautiful and on Bristol if you just keep at it you can get a nice and mostly even coverage. I just needed a lot of more of a lighter hand than I have. But this was my first time ink blending with a lawn fawn ink so I think it turned out fine. Plus I added so many images you barely can see the sky anymore. And now my favorite part, revealing the beautiful nice white edge. I'm just using a tape runner uh, to add the panel to a slimline card base. And I just cut it to be a little bit smaller so that the um, nice scallop around is like, stands out more. Then I'm using liquid glue to add the little bunting flags to the banner or to the garland. Just alternating the colors. I'm using the We Are Memory Keepers quick stick tool and I'm actually not a huge fan of it so if you have a better uh, recommendation for like a picker tool I would really appreciate it. Then I'm just adding the accessories to the treehouse, the window as well as the white door frame. I just kept those nice and neutral because the cart already has a lot going on. Then it was time to start layering the like tree crown. And off camera, I just fiddled around with the placement and how I would like to layer the pieces because there are so many combinations you could do. But I made sure to keep the tree crown fairly low because as a slimline cart is not that tall, I really couldn't make the tree crown that like huge. Then I'm adding the accessories to my cute little cat and I wanted the look to match the others. And since those are like already 
made with the accessories, the stamps, like the little bow tie or the hat. I just trimmed off the white edge of the skirt and the tree uh, and the flower crown so I could add them to the cat so that it looks a little bit more seamless. And I'm really struggling with <laughs> the tiny, tiny little die cut. And now I'm just running the uh, a black Copic multiliner along the edges so that it doesn't look stark against the like gray coloring of the cat. I did make sure on the skirt to leave the edges on the left and right white because those actually match up pretty well with the like contours of the cat. And then I'm just using liquid glue to dress up the cute little kitty. Then I'm also adding the accessories. And I did end up changing this one a little bit later on. I had her holding the little teapot, but I'm actually making her hold the like big birthday cake on the cake stand from the stamp set, which I thought was just, uh, I don't know, just fit the scene better and filled up the like space nicer. Then I'm using a white gel pen to add some details to the letters. And I used the same blue Copic markers on the letters just to make sure that all the colors on the card match. And to be honest, with the white gel pen highlights, a lot of the time it's more of a guessing game for me than I actually know where I want to place them. Especially on the letters, I think it really, really adds a lot. But I'm usually quite worried that I will have to redo everything because I messed up the highlights. But they look so fun, so I have to add them. Then I'm just going through all of my little images and adding some little highlights. First I just added like a little dash on the hedgehog, but then I decided to add a few little strokes just to make the... What is that called on the hedgehog? Is it the, the spikes? The mane? If you know, please let me know. I'm just going through all of the images to add a little something extra, also adding some on the bunting. And then I'm layering my letters. I also cut the Henry's ABCs um, from Fun Foam so that the word would be nice and dimensional. And as you can see, I just put glue on the wrong side of the A, as you do. But it's a quick fix. <laughs> then I just scribbled on some yellow on a spare piece of cardstock to go behind the window of my treehouse. Just making sure it lines up nicely, adding some liquid glue and gluing it down. There's really no point in making sure this looks nice because, as you can see now, I'm just gluing it down flat on the card. So nobody's ever going to know except for you and me. And I know you can keep a secret, right? <laughs> then I'm just adding the bunting. And I was gluing it down and then I realized possibly I should look at the spacing of the letters before I glue in bunting but you know you live and learn then I decided to just go ahead and stamp the sentiment because I wasn't quite sure how big it would be I'm just stamping the it's time onto black cardstock this is from the uh, terrific day add-on just using a brush to brush off any of the excess I also used my anti-static powder tool because I'm black cardstock otherwise I'm pretty sure you couldn't read the sentiment and then I'm using my favorite trick to cut down even strips of cardstock, just using the clear plastic to line up my sentiment. Sorry, my hat gets in the way there, but I just stamped a little B line that I'm using for the butterfly. And then I decided, okay, first better, or first, this is like the fifth step by now, but you know, better late than never, I decided to figure out the spacing for my letters. I did that off camera real quick just to see where I needed to start. And I adjusted the top bunting accordingly. And then I'm just eyeballing the placement of the letters, making sure they're nice and straight, or as straight as I can get them without actually using a tool. I added the little dash so that it would spell 40 and not just 40. 
I'm just picking up the card so I can look at it from like straight on to see if it's even. And then adding the final two letters. And then I'm adding the first part of the sentiment with some foam squares. I just added in the little butterfly and off camera I also added the little accessories to the tree stump like the little tear tray with the what are those macaroon macarons macaroons the cake and I also glued the squirrel in the background then the cute little mouse on top of the mushroom the hedgehog and on the right I decided to add another mushroom because the birdie had to be lifted up already ready with fork in hand and of course the distinguished gentleman holding a little heart macaroon with his monocle it's just so cute and then of course the leading lady with the cake i just really liked the cake stand a lot better than the smaller teapot so i just added that to the tree stump I'm just adding some foam squares to the back so that those are attached with a little bit of dimension. I also added the hedgehog as well as the fox with some foam squares. And I adhered the butterfly on the left. But oh, first I wanted to make sure that she looks like she's just popping out of the door, which I thought was hilarious. And then I decided to pull up the butterfly again because the right side with the sentiment and all of the images felt a lot more heavy than the left so I just decided to try to even it out a little bit with uh, using the remainder of some of the bunting that I snipped off so I just tried to bend it to my will <laughs> it was just kind of being a pain because that part was more straight but it worked out in the end and then I added the cute little butterfly on top and I just felt like that balanced out the scene even though it's really really full a lot better and I had so much fun making this I hope you enjoyed it let me know have you ever had a tea party I I have seen them like on TV but I have no idea what it really entails but I would for sure like to find out I hope I'll see you again next time I'll be back really soon with a new video and until then have an amazing day bye